So much as video games have never been more popular or commercially successful than they are right now, there is an argument to be made that in 2024, the art form has strayed so far from its roots that it's actually become basically unrecognizable. And though recent years have seen record profits for many publishers, an ease around the volatile side of this industry has workers, analysts, and players alike concerned that things are going to keep changing for the worse. So let's have a chat about it today. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and this is why gaming is unrecognizable in 2024. So let's kick things off at the heart of it with the triple A. Now, triple A gaming may be where the biggest money is made, but it also bears the largest costs and therefore the greatest risk. And in recent years, it's become increasingly concerning how perilous and even outright unsustainable that model is. With the average development time of a triple A game ballooning considerably as of late, this means that one single flop or even just a mere underperformance can mean serious trouble for developers who don't have the backing of a major publisher. Uncharted co-creator Amy Hennig pointed out how unviable this business model was all the way back in 2019, and the result is, is that publishers are basically incentivized to only greenlight the most safe bet AAA games moving forward, where the chance of financial failure is minimized. And what that translates to is that now 95% of developers are reportedly working on at least one live service title. It's clear that something fundamentally needs to change about how games are made. Perhaps moving away from an obsession with raw technical power requiring the effort of thousands of people, making games shorter, and setting more realistic sales targets. I mean, just looking at you, Square Enix, on that last one. But you know what? It's a tricky balance to strike, given that many players simply won't want to shell out top day one dollar for a game that doesn't look quite quite cutting edge and won't offer at least 30 to 40 hours of gameplay. Again, it's unsustainable without some serious business overhauls and tough decisions need to be made over the next few years. But let's dial things back and look at 2023, which was, without a doubt, one of the best years for gaming, and yet, no one's really happy about it. You see, because while 2023 was an incredible year for video games, and arguably even the best ever, because it had more high quality titles from the indie all the way up to AAA, but still, even with so much brilliant and so much success, the games industry is in some of the direst straits that it's ever been in right now. Reports estimate that over 10,000 video game workers were laid off in 2023, and barely a month into 2024, we've already lost around 6,000 more. It seems contradictory for the industry to be booming on the surface when the people actually producing the games are losing their livelihoods. And the reasons for this? Well, again, we're back to the unsustainability argument. Publishers feel compelled to cut costs wherever they can in order to maximize profitability for their shareholders. And other factors include overhiring during the pandemic boom, the effects of global inflation, and jobs being lost to AI-assisted development. With more quality games than ever being released right now, it should be cause for celebration all around. And yet, there's instead an atmosphere of fear and dread behind the scenes, with little sign of pervasive layoffs letting up anytime soon. And here's the thing, of all of those games, can you name one on Going Saga that you actually care about? I bet you can't. Now, the game the games industry is built on the backs of mainstay franchises, which keep fans coming back for more every couple of years. Yet in 2024, how many truly engrossing gaming sagas can you actually name? I mean, once upon a time, the likes of Halo, Gears of War, Metal Gear Solid, Mass Effect, and Uncharted could be relied upon to deliver a much-anticipated new entry into an ongoing storyline every few years. But at present, well, this aspect of gaming feels pretty damn lacking, in large part due to the enormously expanded time it takes to develop even a single AAA game, publishers are clearly encouraged to focus more on standalone sequels which function independently for casual players, rather than games that are deeply invested in their own lore and what came before. Now, there are exceptions to this, but they tend to be in the AA space, such as the Like a Dragon or Yakuza franchise, which is able to release quality, highly interconnected mainline titles every two or three years. But the trade-off, inevitably, is the heavy asset reuse and overall feeling of gameplay familiarity. But in the AAA space, well, it's tough to feel hugely invested in any ongoing gaming saga. Even with 2023 being such a banger year for the medium, how many of those games were releases in storied franchises that we can expect to be playing again 
in the next two or three years. But let's move from the games and talk about the actual hardware that we're on, because you know what? We've apparently hit a glass ceiling on the current gen already. You see, the current gen of gaming has certainly delivered more than its fair share of extremely high quality releases so far, but there's also a sinking feeling that technical leaps from the prior gen have been pretty underwhelming on the whole. PS5 games definitely look great, of course, but they also largely felt like PS4 games, but shinier. And even the much ballyhooed SSD tech doesn't seem like it's adding a whole lot to games structurally beyond decreasing loading times. This may be in part due to this generation's continued emphasis on producing cross-gen titles, ensuring that they need to be able to function on fast aging legacy hardware as well as the current hotness, in turn holding back their true potential. And yet, we're roughly halfway into the current gen life cycle and it already feels like games have hit the hardware's roof in terms of graphical fidelity, which given that consoles typically come into their own at the end of their life cycle is pretty concerning. I mean, everything looks great, but I'll ask you this, does anything look amazing? This generation has been desperately lacking its wow factor and the fact that mid-gen hardware refreshes are becoming the norm, what with the PS5 Pro widely rumored to release before year's end, only furthers the argument that the first iteration of current gen consoles felt like a half-baked extension of the previous gen. But what are we actually playing on these consoles? Well, the games that you actually want are actually getting completely ignored, because gamers are consistently complaining about a patent lack of originality within the industry, that modern AAA gaming is largely dominated by generic, soulless open-world collectathons and pretty but shallow cinematic action blockbusters. But where's the support for all of these original games that they claim to want so badly? In 2023 alone, there's a laundry list of quality, sensibly budgeted and accordingly priced AA titles which were largely ignored by the gaming masses and received only a fraction of the press that this year's biggest tentpoles did. I mean, where to begin with this? Evil West, Robocop Rogue City, Dusant, Oxenfree 2 Lost Signals, and even Hi-Fi Rush, which, while more high profile than the other games just mentioned, still apparently underperformed on Xbox Game Pass. And Jeff Grubb had this to say on the matter. I was just trying to say that I heard that Hi-Fi Rush didn't make the money it was expected to make. But to be clear, I don't really know how Microsoft measures success. This was just a small passing statement in a larger conversation. It wasn't meant to make people worry about HFR. Now, all of these games have a small but passionate fan base, and if you did play them, well, there's a good chance that you had a great time with them. But the average player is so painfully unadventurous in their gaming tastes that the fresh, original games that they claim to want end up falling upon deaf ears, likely ensuring that less of them are made in the future. And you know what? It's not necessarily their fault, because the majority of gamers, well, they're priced out of what they want to love. Though players have more options than ever for how to play their games today, it's also fair to say that gaming can be an incredibly expensive hobby, and one which is simply left out of reach for many in today's fraught global economic situation. Is it really reasonable that the average AAA game costs 60 to 70 pounds when wages are not rising with inflation? PC and console markets alone generated roughly $100 billion in revenue in 2023, and yet the price hiking of blockbuster games has ultimately left many waiting for sales or, worse still, just not bothering at all. This has likely further contributed to the uptick in free-to-play gaming models in recent years, with varying degrees of artistic success depending on how pervasively the inevitable microtransactions are integrated. Ultimately, it's depressing that so many are being priced out of the medium that they have so much love and passion for, all in an effort to drive the relentless pursuit of profitability. And what we're seeing is that there is a fractured trust between the gamer and the console that they're supporting. And as a result, because we don't want to shell out a lot of money for something that may be very bad, well, nobody trusts day one releases. And as much as publishers obviously want as many players as possible to buy their games day one for maximum profits, the value proposition of buying just about any major game on release day has arguably never been lower. In recent years, there's basically been an epidemic of AAA blockbuster games releasing rife with bugs, performance issues, and even effectively feeling half finished. Most infamously was the Cyberpunk 2077's shambolic launch, and more recently, the wonky releases of Star Wars Jedi Survivor and The Last of Us Part 1's PC port. It's clear that publishers would rather release a rough-around-the-edges product on their set-in-stone release day than endure a costly delay and upset shareholders, no matter that it ends up giving the most excited and loyal customers the very worst experience of all. Unless you absolutely have to play a game day one or are pathologically susceptible to FOMO, there's very little up to playing a AAA game on release day. If you wait just a few months, you'll almost certainly get an objectively better experience, with the aforementioned bugs smoothed out and nagging performance issues patched, and not to mention there's the prospect of additional game modes and free 
updates and sometimes they'll just be a sale. And the grand irony here, of course, is that by waiting a few months, you'll almost certainly get this game cheaper than you would on launch day, especially if you're playing on PC. And because people are being more careful with how they spend their money, they're looking for what is the best deal and say hello to the monthly subscription model, which is somehow failing. You see, subscription models are all the rage across all types of media nowadays, and gaming is certainly no exception, with the likes of Xbox Game Pass, PlayStation Plus, Nintendo Switch Online, Ubisoft Plus, EA Play, and so on. But just as it's often said that Netflix can't sustainably produce theatrical caliber blockbuster films at a steady rate, there's mounting evidence that gaming subscriptions are not, in fact, the future. Xbox Game Pass is surely the consensus favorite gaming subscription service, offering a huge platter of games, including Microsoft first-party titles day and date for a reasonable monthly fee. But Game Pass's growth stagnated considerably throughout 2023, suggesting that they're beginning to hit a subscriber ceiling. And though recent reports indicate some tectonic shifts on the horizon for Microsoft this year, it's tough to make sense of how, at present, Game Pass can possibly be sustainable given the value it offers players. And honestly, if Game Pass can't turn a steady profit, it's tough to pass how other inferior, less popular services possibly have a hope of doing so. Just as streaming services are currently going through a period of major consolidation, it's reasonable to expect the same for the gaming industry in the future, with only a few flagship ones left standing, albeit with serious price hikes to reflect the inevitable acquisitions. And above all else, there's a reason that Sony didn't give AAA games away day and date on PlayStation Plus. It was a desperation move that Microsoft made in an attempt to be competitive. It's a wonderful service for sure, but it's also one that feels held together by hope and dreams at this point. And speaking of dreams, let's talk about Nintendo, because if we're being honest, they are the only one that have the spirit of gaming left intact right now. And while it would be overwhelmingly naive to suggest that Nintendo is in the gaming business for the sheer love of creation, I mean, they are a business after all, they do in many respects feel like the last holdout retaining that true spirit of the medium. As Sony and Microsoft have been locked in console wars nonsense in perpetuity, Nintendo has just been doing their own thing on the periphery avoiding the most obvious industry trends, and instead offering up some of the most vibrant and joyful experiences of the last decade via the Nintendo Switch. And you know what? It's paid off dividends, with the Switch serving as a major commercial rebound for Nintendo following the, uh, well, whatever the Wii U was. They've managed to successfully silo themselves off away from their competition by doing the unexpected and delivering such distinct, unique gaming experiences, and ones that you can't get on PC, which in turn manages to retain some of that childlike magic that is lacking in Sony and Microsoft's lineups. We desperately need more out of this in 2024, because at present, so much of what the gaming industry puts out just feels beige, predictable. I mean, it's competent for sure, but it's safely chasing market trends rather than actually trying to innovate. But let's deal with one final point, and that is quite a sobering one, and that is that gaming kind of has nothing left to prove. Because let's face it, we're now at a point where gaming doesn't need to beat its chest about its legitimacy as an art form. The medium's potential for richly emotional storytelling and gorgeous aesthetic design means any lingering debate about gaming's worthiness as art is basically over. Only the most ill-informed would argue that gaming isn't art in 2024. Between this and Hollywood finally taking gaming IP seriously where adaptations are concerned, it's safe to say that games have reached a peak of approval where they've just got nothing left to prove. In decades past, gaming was desperate to prove itself worthy of other art forms that were genuinely deemed superior, like movies, TVs, and books, ensuring an artistic hunger which resulted in some of the most bold, provocative, and unforgettable games ever made. But there's a clear feeling of comfort in the modern gaming sphere, that with its place as a worthy art form now firmly cemented, there's no need to push the bar anymore. And so that may well explain why we've seen such a grotesque ramp up in money-grabbing practices over the last decade or so. Microtransactions, live service nonsense and a severe decline in purely single-player experiences. Now, this isn't to declare that all developers are cashing in on the gaming's mainstream acceptance, but rather that those continuing to push things forward, like the Naughty Dogs and Remedies of the World, well, they're few and far between. Gaming has never felt more safe and sanitized than it does right now, with risk-averse publishers driven to the industrious pursuit of profit, complacent in the knowledge that gaming is no longer sniffed at as the lesser of all art forms. And with nothing left to prove, why even bother trying? 
trying. And there we go, my friends. That is how gaming is unrecognizable in 2024. I hope that you enjoyed that and let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. Would you like to see more of this type of video? I really enjoyed making this, so please let me know what you thought about it down there. But before I go, I just want to say one thing, technically two, actually. I want you to first go over to the FGS or Future Game Show YouTube channel and give me a follow over there because that's where I do all of my gaming content going forward on the regular, my friend. And you can stay up to date with my weekly gaming list series called The Deep Cut, where I only choose games that you probably have never heard about. And also, why not chuck me a follow over on Instagram as well, where it is at RetroJ, but the O is a zero. Hope to see you over there. But here's the other thing I was going to say. I hope you're treating yourself well with love and respect my friend because you deserve the bloody best things in life like love happiness and success and do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise you are a massive ledge and i want you to go out there and smash your life goals today because i believe in you all right as always i've been jules you have been awesome never forget that i'll speak to you soon bye